So how many of us believe God at what He says for our lives? When God tells us that we're going to be going somewhere, that we're going to be doing something, right? And do we just hold on to just His Word? Or do we hold on to more? Do we hold on to whatever He says and that's it? Or do we try to put our own input in there and try to create our own way to make sure that that word ends up coming to pass instead of relying and having faith on what he said? Because if God tells you something and it's going to happen, then it's going to happen regardless, right? You don't have to put your input in. You ain't got to use your resources. You don't have to do that. Because he's the sovereign God over everything, so therefore if he, if he, he's the God of the universe. He can move the universe into your favor to do exactly what it is that he wants, him, he wants to do. Makes me think of this. It makes me think of Acts chapter 27, verses 1 through 30. And uh, what happens is, is Paul is being taken to Caesar. And he's going to uh, go be, do his defense before Caesar. And they said, if, they said they had faith that they believed that they were going to get to where they were going. But as they were about to uh, leave the harbor, they do something. They load up a skiff. Now, what a skiff is, um, it's a lifeboat. It's the thing on the Titanic when everybody, when the Titanic's falling down and they were trying to load all them boats, right? And everybody's jumping in, kids, women, children, everybody, right? That's a skiff. That's a lifeboat. It's the thing that, it's, it, it's your plan B if something doesn't happen. Okay. So they load the skiff up and they hold it down. They go through the, they go through their sea. But what happens is that, through it. Now, mind you, in the beginning, they are believing God is going to take them to where they're going. Now, Paul tell them. We, Paul says we ain't supposed to go just yet. We're supposed to hold on a little bit. And uh, and what happens is they leave anyway. They don't. They don't listen to Paul. They don't listen to the word of God. And they leave. And tempests uh, come. Storms, winds is just hitting their boat every which way direction. Right. And remember, we talked about before. Uh, when Peter stepping out of the boat, and, and later on Jesus came into his boat. See, uh, our boat is our life. And when they were going, they believed that God was going to tell them where they were going. So in the midst of where they're going, winds and storms and everything comes, and they start throwing everything off. Man, we got to get rid of dead weight. We got to get rid of this stuff so that we will live, so that we won't, we won't die, right? And Paul's like, man, just chill. Just chill. If God said it. It's going to happen. And so as they're freaking out, they start letting down their skiffs. They start letting down the skiffs, which is their lifeboats, because they think they're about to go run aground somewhere, and uh, they got to get up out of their boat. And Paul still tells the captain, they can't do that. They have to stay in this boat to be saved. I want you to think about that. And the wind... And so the, uh, the wind was coming so much that that skiff was let go and broken and was uh, let it go. See, from the very beginning, they had a plan B just in case if plan A didn't, uh, didn't happen. But check this out. If God is the God of your plan A, what in the world makes you think that you need a plan B? Because he's sovereign. He, he's over everything. He can control the universe to make sure that that plan goes forth. Who are, who are we to, to tell the creator that, he, that we have a better input, we have a better plan than what he's told us? But so many of us hold on to our skiff. So many of us hold on to our plan B saying, if I hold on to this, if what God says doesn't come to pass, I can jump into this and make sure it comes to pass. But look what Paul says. He says they have to let go of this gift and they have to stay in the boat. You have, to, you have to let go of what you think that you're supposed to do. And you have to stay in exactly where you're supposed to be, where, where God told you to be. And go where he's told you to go and believe that he's going to get you to where he's going. And believe that he's in the boat with you. And if God's in the boat with you, it's like when Jesus was in the bottom of the boat sleeping in the middle of a storm. He, you are, e listen to this, listen to this. If you have a purpose, catch this. People talk about immorality, right? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm immortal. If you have a purpose, and you're walking in the will of God, and you haven't fulfilled your purpose yet, you are immortal. The enemy cannot touch you. He might can bring things upon you, but you are not going to die. Why? It's because you have a purpose that needs to be, that needs to be fulfilled. 
you are, listen, you are immortal if your purpose is not, fulfill, is not fulfilled yet. So regardless your circumstance, regardless what's going on, I don't care what it looks like in your, in your situation. The enemy cannot take you out like the wind was trying to take out the boat. It cannot take you out until your purpose is fulfilled in him. So if that's true, as it is, let go of your plan B. Let go of what you think that you might need to do later on in life. Because God knows exactly what you're going to do. And deep down, you know what he's told you to do. And deep down, you know that your plan B uh, uh, doesn't need to be held on no more. You need to release that. And as you release that, watch you be saved. Watch God move. Watch God make sure you get delivered where you need to go. Remember, you are immortal until your purpose is fulfilled. And remember, he is the God of plan A. And if he's the God of everything, your plan B doesn't mean nothing. Let go of it and just listen to what he's told you. Father God, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for being the God of our salvation, the God of this universe that moves everything in our favor, but not just everything in our favor and everything that, uh, so we can be designed cre uh, together, Father God, and allow your purpose and your will on this earth to, be, to, to come forth, Father. Whatever that is, Lord, allow us to completely decrease as you increase. Allow us to get rid of the things in which we hold on to, thinking that our input is better than yours. And, and Lord, allow us to have a heart that seeks after your, your plan, your command, and, and just listen to you, be sensitive to you and obedient to you and walk in the way that you have called us to walk. Allow us to have faith that you will save us. Allow us to have faith that regardless of what goes on, regardless of our situations, you are sovereign over that and you are the God that will lead us from that, Father God. So we just thank you today. We bless you today. We thank you for this lesson that will encourage us and strengthen us through this day. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>